Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where we spill tea left, right, and everywhere in between. In today's video, we are covering Jeff Wittick spilling the tea, spilling the beans, and spilling his whole heart on the whole situation with David and what he is actually mad about. And it's not just what you think. But before we get into the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new uploads, and head over to the Hot Tea Twitter account where you can follow and message us with any tea or topics that you would like to see covered. All right, let's get into it. Jeff posted a podcast from Jeff FM titled Dear David, and we had to watch just so we could report to you what is going on. As most of you know, though, this has been going on for a while between Jeff and David, but very recently, Jeff seems to have taken the gloves off and started speaking his full truth on the situation. Jeff clarifies that after his most recent surgery, it is looking like everything will be okay with his eye, even though there was a 30% chance that he was going to wake up blind in that eye. The beginning of this video of Jeff's was actually, I'm sorry, kind of lame, but just before I thought it was going to be a struggle to get through the video for you guys, Jeff appears in his studio. We are back in the studio. I didn't really like how uh, the rest of that episode went when I got into addressing some serious topics, so I'm off drugs. I'm back here in the studio. In fairness to Jeff, I'd say that was a good call deciding to be off the meds while he had this discussion, and he says himself that it would in some way invalidate what he had to say, and I respect that. Jeff refers to the live stream that went around the internet the other day where he said that he hadn't heard from David and fuck Ethan, etc. We covered that too, so if you missed it, don't forget to check that out. But it seems that a lot of people aren't aware that just because content is behind a paywall, it doesn't mean that it's going to be kept private or a secret. I actually kind of get that vibe that Jeff didn't realize how shared those clips would be after the fact, but I'm guessing that he stands by what he said. It felt really good to get that off my chest. It felt good to get that out there. It felt good to hit that unfollow button. You know, I woke up from surgery and a day goes by, no text from him. Another day goes by, no text. Jeff gets pretty much straight in into it, I mean, after about 10 minutes of chitter chatter, and says that there is so much more to the story than just David not texting him to check on him after the big surgery. I just want to fucking tell the truth, finally. Like, I gave this, I gave this motherfucker so many chances. Even now, a week later, I still haven't heard a peep. I've been posting shit on Instagram because it feels good, because you fucked me so bad mentally and physically that, yeah, this is how I cope now. That's actually crazy that he hasn't heard anything even now since everything has been posted and said on social media. Besides the fact that David was supposed to be a friend to Jeff to not check in on something like this when it was literally his fault, it certainly doesn't seem that David is the person that he portrays himself to be, but I mean, who is really surprised about that anymore, am I right? Jeff did a documentary back in April 2021 that covered the whole story of his injury and partially his resentment towards David. Also, a quick side note, that documentary actually won a streaming. Anyways, during his Jeff FM podcast, Jeff mentions that he has been protecting David for too long and he sugarcoated a lot of the stuff in his documentary. Jeff explains that the damage to his eye is permanent and he will be dealing with eye problems for the rest of his life. He says that having learned who David really is, he's not surprised that he hasn't heard from him and if anything, doesn't expect to. Jeff details the real reason he was mad due to a documentary that is coming out by David and a clip within that documentary that was shared with him by someone else involved in the production. He called me, FaceTimed me to show me the clip of the interview when David addressed the situation with the crane and he said that it was my fault. David blamed me for the, the crane. He insinuated that I was crazy. I always want to push it and I'm the reason that this happened when that's complete bullshit. Okay, I'm sorry. Whatever your opinions may be on Jeff and whatever your opinions may be on that situation, I feel like you can literally see the pain in Jeff's face when he says out loud that the person that is at fault for an injury that very nearly cost him his life has now turned it around and projected the blame back at him. Anyone who has had something like this happen to them, where someone does something awful, knows how badly that hurts when someone throws the blame back at you. Never mind an apology, never mind taking any accountability, never mind even reaching out and checking in on you. All of those things seem like luxuries when something as psychologically messed up as this happens and they are literally things that are like the bare minimum. Jeff says that he has lost all respect for David now and that he took the injury on the chin and protected David saying that he could have ended up deported or in jail for manslaughter. In the documentary of Jeff's, he even let David go through that before it was released and remove anything that made him look bad. Oh my god. And he came right in here, ran right in into the editing bay, and all he cared about was editing to clean up the fucking video to cover up that this happened. 
You can't cover it up. Apparently, that day after the accident happened, Kourtney Kardashian FaceTimed David, to which David panned the phone towards Jeff and said, quote, he did something stupid. Jeff didn't like this, he didn't like telling the story again during this podcast, and he didn't like the situation when it happened. He says that when this moment happened, a switch flipped and Jeff explained very carefully to David that he would take the injury on the chin, but he would not be blamed for the accident, and if David tries to ever spin things in that way, it would be a problem. And it seems like that is where we are at, guys. Because now he said in a documentary that even the director was so shocked that he had to call me, he hadn't shown anybody, and this guy who's editing it and, and making this, he's not showing David, supposedly. He won't give him any chances to edit anything. Jeff seems maybe to possibly think that this might not have been an accident. It's blurred, but he asked me to come out there three, four, five, six times, asked me to go out there one more time just because it was more scenic and we were supposed to go slow. The water was one foot deep. If I would have flown off that thing, it's a lose-lose. I die that way. Jeff does say that he understands that he is the one who decided to get up there and do it and he knows that that was a stupid decision as he was never really the one to do the stunts. But Jeff attributes his thoughts on moving forward with this up to being high in his feelings off of skydiving and was just caught up in the moment. In addition to having this injury that will be a problem forever and finding out that David isn't really his friend, Jeff was also promised that the hospital bills would be covered. They slacked because whatever the f they're doing, making stupid vlogs, they didn't pay attention to something that's, I, I would think it's pretty important here. I don't, I'm not coming after him for money I lost from not being able to work or anything like that. And they didn't pay a f***ing bill. I got an infraction on my credit now. I go to get a house and I can't get a loan. Before Jeff became friends with this group, he got out of a breakup and says during this podcast that meeting them all and becoming part of that circle happened at the right time. And now this sucks because there are people in that group who he loves. This includes Jason Ash, who Jeff mentions towards the end of the podcast when he references the Bryce Hall roast. As we know, Jeff was supposed to be part of that roast, but pulled out when the jokes were getting cut and because David is involved. I wrote my own jokes. I, I worked hard on it. I said nothing that I wouldn't say in a a podcast or a YouTube video, 50% of my jokes, these have to go. And I just said, cut my whole set. I don't want to be a part of it. And some of my jokes were on David and I don't even want to deal with this shit anymore. So just as Jeff is about to wrap up the podcast, he mentions the good old H3 podcast. Death oh, Poodles. H3. I'm supposed to go on your show. I'm thinking about it. I got a few lists of requests that I need to prove. And with that, Jeff leaves us on the notes that he just might do something in ways of a lawsuit statute of limitations provided. Ethan Klein has seen this episode of Jeff FM and actually reacted to a lot of the points during a recent H3 podcast. Ethan seems to genuinely care and offers up some advice for Jeff, telling him that he fully should move forward with legal action, if not at least for the closure. Leave a comment down below if you think I should sue David. Yes. Ethan actually says that Jeff should talk to him about all of this because he has really good attorneys and can help. He says that he does not believe there is a statute of limitations on civil crimes and even if there was, Ethan reckons that he should be just fine as this incident really kind of just happened. Ethan briefly mentions the Patreon live stream that went around, as Jeff said, in his podcast for people to stop sharing the stuff from there. And stop ripping our Patreon live streams and making them public. They're supposed to be private. Well, stop putting good gossip in there and I'll stop showing it. <laughs> also, we talked about me in it. Like, come on now. There's a rat in the Patreon. We gotta find it. <laughs> that stuff's supposed to be personal. That's funny. Again, I really think that Ethan actually cares about Jeff and wants to help him out. Ethan makes a lot of jokes and even checks in with his team during this episode to make sure that he's not being too hard on Jeff and he still wants him to come on the show and doesn't want Jeff to not associate with him. And speaking of coming on the show, Ethan shares Jeff's demands with us. He said, I need uh, three ice cold LaCroix. If it's room temperature, I'm walking out of there. Verbatim, that's what he said. Yeah. We don't know what flavor yet, but we'll see if they even move forward. And with that, that is going to wrap up this video. You guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as well as hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any hot tea as we upload new videos every single day. And for now, let's enjoy a palate cleanser so we can try and enjoy the rest of our day knowing that David Dobrik is out here just living his best life while being terrible. <laughs>